Hello, dear viewers. Welcome to my channel, Science to Technology. In today's show, Science Thursday, we're going to talk about hydropower's consequences. So let's dive deep into it. Now, I'm uh, assured that most education systems in most countries generally talk about dams as a like a miracle solution. So what was the dream? Well, it's almost same as nuclear. It was like, it's supposed to be a green energy source, no carbon dioxide emission, that's good. It's supposed to uh, control flooding and prevent droughts. That's awesome. And water management, meaning once you build a reservoir, it can have enough pressure that you can divert water from uh, any water rich area to water poor area. And you are also gonna get power on top of that. While it's a renewable, it does have uh, one benefit that no other renewables have. 24 into 7 into 365 base load power, meaning if it says 500 megawatt, it's gonna give you 500 megawatt, 24 into 7 into 365. Now, here's the deal. If you are not a child, you must understand that this is too good to be true. All this benefit without the consequences, something is off. Well, uh, reality is it's off. However, uh, we humans only recently went into mega categories, mega as in like uh, any uh, dam that actually crosses 1000 megawatt of electrical generation. Uh, yeah, there are more than enough, but that's the whole point. Like uh, we did it. Now enough time has passed that we have actually figured out all the data. We have learned all the consequences, all the benefits, pros and cons, everything. You have to run the experiment. So we did it. Datas are in. So there are far more consequences than there are positive things. So let's dive deep into it. So first consequence, which is the biggest consequence that it causes drought directly. Now here's the deal, let this be very clear. Engineers knew about this. Uh, whenever you are going to a dam engineers and all that, there were hydrologists whose sole job was to figure out how much uh, faster they're gonna dry out the river. Now they did the calculation, they put that the number, but always they were way too optimistic about this or not taking it seriously. And be mindful, all these numbers before they were even uh, plotting global temperature rise. So right now all the predictions are useless. And uh, if they are saying a river should dry up by 2070, that simply means it's gonna dry up by 2030. So rivers can survive their own natural evaporation. That's how a river survives. That's how a river is a river. Otherwise, it just will be a stream that boils off. That Again, it's always there. That's how nature figures out. Can a river survive or not? Does it boil off or not? As simple as that. Okay, done. But here's the Every river, no matter how big it is, it does not matter. It's a Nile River. It does not matter. Brahmaputra River. It does not matter. It's a Yangtze River. It does not matter. No matter which river you take, how big or how magnificent it is, if you have a boosted boil off, meaning if you are increasing its boil off, you will boil it away. Yes, it can be done. And yes, we have done it. So what does this mean? Like this boil off? Well, this simply means dam increases surface area by few x. For example, if you have a river that is, uh, let's say, uh, 300 uh, 100 meter wide and it's going. Okay, it's cool. You just go, wabam it. You put a, basically a blockade there. Now you uh, allow water to pool in the backside reservoir. Reservoirs are huge. Like in case of uh, uh, Three Gorges Dam, it's almost 1000 square kilometer. It's huge. So you increase that much surface area. What is the consequence of that? Well, that surface area is now has higher exposure to sunlight and wind. Wind takes evaporation away. That causes more evaporation. Like think about this. What do you do when water falls on your floor? You spread it around. It allows uh, in increased surface area, which allows quicker evaporation. You did this to a river. You increased its surface area. You increased enough area where sunlight can fall. So air alone can cause higher evaporation. Now you have also exposed it to more sunlight. So yeah fundamentally you are uh, increasing what we call boosted boil off so evaporation rate was x now you have uh, x multiplied by three or four or sometimes even higher than that that's why all reservoir temperatures are generally one to two degree higher or even ha hotter than that so evaporation goes exponentially. Now that's on the reservoir side. What about the downstream? Now downstream you have choked flow. So fundamentally, uh, because you have such few, uh, lesser quantity of water, uh, that consequence is it boils off even quicker. So one side you have a drought condition by your own making, other side you are causing drought, but because you cannot see evaporation, you are like, yeah, who cares? So consequences, in few decades, it will end a river. For example, when Three Gorges Dam was being built, uh, more than enough Chinese people who love their country were like, please do not do this. A dam of this magnitude will have consequences, catastrophic consequences. Now, China is a very proud country about this fact that they have never been truly invaded uh, and uh, they've never been enslaved. So they have an unbroken history for thousands of years, as they claim. And in thousands of years, they never had a scenario where Yangtze River dried out. Now you were like, oh, it wasn't hot back then. No, it was. Like there were days, uh, there was sun was getting a bit too antsy. There was days where you had way too much forest fire. There were days there were very few rain. It happens. It's one of those things. Thousand years is a long time. Things happen. But uh, the river expanded, contracted. All these things happened, but it never dried out until recently. 
until recently, like think about it, it's almost a kilometer long bridge and nothing, nothing, not even a single drawbridge, like nope, not even a stream by the way, like people are literally picnicking in the summer in the riverbed and again, uh, you can look at the pillars and pillars generally engineers when they do markings, they mark a, a lo lot of buffer. So if river water is expected to this much, they will mark till here in here. They never bother to mark till the last point or the above point. So it's done. This happened and be mindful. I'm talking about China because China went all in into hydro. They were like the biggest proponent and they went all stupid on tears like that's how we're going to do it. We're going to green energy and all that. So their demise was way too quicker. Three gorgeous dam is the largest dam. So consequence, they dried the largest river very quickly. Expected evaporation is supposed to happen by 2050, but it happened 2020. And be mindful, that's why I specified all the calculations are wrong, all of them, because none of them are accounting for expen uh, you know, exponential temperature growth. So if they are saying today, let's say any dam engineers are saying, yeah, hey, we're going to increase the evaporation by, let's say, 10%, that means it's almost 15%. So fundamentally, only in few decades. So what does a decade mean? Decade means 10 years. Uh, human uh, generation is classified as 30 years. Lifespan is 90 years, meaning you can literally be born. You can watch someone stupid to say that, hey, I'm going to build a dam there. And before you are dead, you can watch a river die before your eyes. And it has happened in USA, India, China, uh, whatever country. By the way, you have tried um, uh, basically seas also because of this. So it's one of those things that we have learned the hard way that you will dry the rivers off. Like this is the downstream of a small dam. You do not even need to have a mega dam. You can still cause that effect. Actually, smaller dams will cause even higher uh, drying out season. So this happens only in few decades. Few, meaning you will remember this and it will like poof, gone, done, nothing, done, zero. The whole river disappears and it could be so bad that it could literally reach a point where you will rarely have flow in rainy season. That's how bad it can get. We are already starting to see the early phase of it. It took 20 years to reach here, but uh, <laughs> current data is like even same in Hoover Dam. Like they were never even imagined it like, you know, early years of like it's going to go this low. It happened and it, every year is going even deeper and deeper. So that's the reality of it. Now, that's the drought part. What about ecology? Well, to be fair, to be fair, while way too many people talk about uh, dams as a, like a green energy issues, I have seen enough wisdom that people do talk about that it does cause ecological disaster, uh, even in school books. So the fact is that you are creating a uh, dead stop for aquatic migration. Now, be very mindful. Uh, a pond of water is neither alive nor dead unless it has life cycle inside it. If it has a completely healthy life cycle, it's a alive thing. It does not, um, like basically it can take care of itself. For example, urine, like human urine, it's a lot. Here's, here's the fun fact. So does animal. So how does a river uh, remains non-toxic free? It has a life system there that is breaking it down. There is small microorganism, there is a macroorganism, then even bigger organism. You have a whole ecology. Now, if you kill that ecology, you can take a river that is healthy and almost uh, detoxifying itself. You can take that puppy and convert it into sewer. So this is a very critical requirement. If you can uh, basically poof the life from a river, it becomes a sewage. Now you have literally put a dead stop in the migration. Yeah, you literally poofed it. So thankfully, some people somewhere uh, noticed that uh, they really needed a fish. So they built uh, fish ladders. These are structures that allows a uh, fish to naturally walk up. In some scenarios, pumps are used to pump uh, fishes out, depending on the structures and all that. Now, again, is it as good as not having the dam? Hell no. But it's better than zero. That's very clear. It's better than zero. And here's the ironic part. Way too many countries don't even bother with this. So they are literally poofing their future away without even realizing it. So that happens. So this, this is a bandit solution, but at least I'm happy that somebody bothered with it. And then we come to sediment trapping. Now this is the really ugly part. So sediments are natural cycle. Like it's supposed to happen. You're supposed to have a runoff. You're supposed to have all those things. So this is why if you studied your geography, um, early geography very carefully, you must have paid attention to the fact we always talk about river delta as a fertile land. Why? Well, river delta gets flooded. Flooded it with what? Water does not give you fertility in the land. Sediments do. So that's why that's how our pre, um, basically pre-industrial revolution people successfully managed to feed themselves. You have sediments actually periodically recharging your lands. Now, what happens if you build a diamond? So you build a dam, now it only gets collected on the backside. Now here's the deal. Downstream, now you have a very serious lack of nutrition, very serious lack of material, chemicals, th minerals, things of that nature that life 
relied on. So now you have starved them, they did, it's a sewer. On the other side, you have over provided them, meaning the concentration year by year, it starts to grow. So that part also becomes sterile. So even though in early years, nobody would notice, five years now like, hey, I'm not seeing the fish, um, health of the fish species as it used to be. And then uh, 15 years later, they were like, uh, why the heck there is no any fish? It happens slowly, like this is very clear, it's a slow process, but we know, like we know that if you do not manage the sediment, it's gonna have consequences. And worst case scenario, it can just fill up the dams. And yes, that has also happened. So we have learned it, like the sedimentation trap makes both sides toxic, one side due to lack, other side due to too much of it. And without life, basically rivers become sewers. You have to understand this very carefully. Life has to, life has the ability to dissolve almost everything. That's how nature evolved, practically speaking. But it's just like if you remove the life form from it, yeah, then it's not healthy anymore. So that's the ecological disaster part. Thankfully, people have far more awareness of this part of it than a drought part, but at least they are aware of this. Then we come to the flooding. And yes, it sounds ironic, something that causes drought also causes flooding. And yes, both of them can be inside a year. So you could be literally um, starving for one drop of water and same year uh, in rainy season, you could be drowning. So reservoirs are kept uh, full for four power production because here's the another part of it. If let's say three gorges dam, it says like it's a twelve gigawatt dam. What does that mean? That simply means it has turbines that's total capacity is twelve gigawatt. Does that mean it's running all that power? No. Most of the time, most uh, dams are very low uh, on time, 60%, 50%, things of this nature. Basically, almost like wind turbines. So why not? Well, that's the whole point. River is a natural system. Buffer, no matter how good it is, is still dependent on the inflow. So if you have low inflow, you have to either let more water go on the downstream or choke the downstream. So that becomes a very careful balancing act. So they do their best, but they try to uh, keep the uh, reservoir as full as possible to get the as high head pressure as possible to get more work done. Consequence, when you are keeping it fu uh, full, almost full, it's useless against flood. It becomes your flood at that point in time. Now, why don't we just like, you know, keep some empty area? Yeah, lower power production is not safe for the grid. And again, from an economics point of view, you spent a serious amount of money, not some chump change. You are talking about some serious amount of money and uh, you cannot risk a grid for it, like right? You cannot risk a national grid because somebody is like worried that there might be rain, too much rain and all that jazz. So that is a very serious push and pull. Safety will be like, hey, hey, hey drain the reservoirs and uh, profit will be like, hey, hey, keep the reservoir full. Both are valid. So what happens uh, when these two situation clashes? Most of the time grid wins out and then flooding is done. So control flooding becomes the only option. And yes, this also happens in India. Now again, no, not nothing this severe. We are surprisingly good at this. And this is the part of China that somehow uh, people just ignore is that because they built so many dams so close to each other, one dam's uh, discharge becomes a cascade failure. All of them have to instantly discharge so they can flood a very large region, a region so large that it can be seen from satellites. It's brutal. And that's happening almost uh, regularly. This is from uh, this one, if I'm not mistaken, 2020. This one is from 2022. Uh, uh, this is same from 2022. 2023 was also bad. Yes, it's that bad. Even though they have so many dams, they are literally creating their worst nightmare. Because again, they have to keep the reservoir full because you have so many that it's like you have, uh, ideally you're supposed to happen if you are detecting monsoon season, you're supposed to start draining all of the reservoir. First, the last one, then second last, third last, the, until you get to the source. You slowly drain all of them. You keep all of them in the recharge, but here still doing so will reduce your power production. That is not acceptable for growing economy. Uh, so they're like, let's drown the people. So they drown the people. And yes, this happens regularly. Let that be very clear. This is happening regularly. In the same year, they will have a drought that would be like people are picnicking in the river basin. So that's the whole point. And if you have too many dams, it causes cascade failure. And one of the dam, they blew up themselves. And be mindful, the same thing happens everywhere. Um, again, even in my brother lives in an area that is close to a dam and they do have uh, random evacuations once in a while. Now, thankfully, the, nothing flooded ever happened, but uh, what was the point of this dam if you are evacuating me because of a flood risk? I, I get it. I get it. Like I say, better safe than sorry. But that's the whole point of a dam. Like you're not supposed to put me in that awkward position where it's like, wait a minute, I built you so you can protect me. Now you're telling me you are the risk itself. So that's the whole point. You can literally build a dam and be like, why the heck it's flooding? Why the heck it's causing drought? Why the heck it's killing the river? All three things happen. 
So what can we expect in the future? Well, here still, all the data concurs at this point in time that extreme weather events will happen far more frequently. What does extreme weather event means? Extreme weather event simply means anything that we have collected collectively classified as normal behavior of nature, basically normal amount of rain for normal amount of that, it generally is a band. So let's say the band has like X amount of rain minimum, X into four uh, is maximum. Let's say that is the range. So four uh, X of variables. Now, extreme weather event simply means you can have zero rain, zero X. So you can go nothing, complete drought to 18 X rain, bonkers amount of rain, meaning the rain that will cause devastation. So that is becoming far common and it's becoming common everywhere, be it China, be it Pakistan, be it India, be it Russia, be it whatever else you give. So it's becoming far more common. Now what we have learned, so far we have learned this very clearly is that fighting against nature, dam, uh, dam was a design that was like, boom, I'm going to stop you. Like from an engineering point of view, it's damn, because it's like, damn, you're stopping a river practically for decades on end. So it's a, from an engineering point of view, damn. So that's the awesome part. But problem is, uh, we are fighting against nature. When you are building a dam, you are fighting against nature. And we have learned the hard way that's stupid, dumb and harmful to ourselves. So we have to learn to adapt to it. So I give you a simple example. This is Japan. So Japan, uh, they have a lot of rivers going through Tokyo, way too many. So this is their topographical map. And uh, this is how you will notice this river comes, looks almost like a coming up top. Now, why is coming top? Because yes, their sea level is zero uh, and uh, there are 10 meter sea, uh, basically reverse walls. They kept building it up, kept building it up, kept building it up. So it's now 10 meter high. It is very dangerous fundamentally. Now, of course, like, it's not that narrow. They have compressed the length, but this is a very realistic topological map. And the problem is that if any of these walls on any of these rivers break, it will cause flooding because this whole thing is, well, you can see it's almost like a basin. <coughs> So it will cause very severe flooding. So it's, they spend bonkersly large amount of money for uh, flood prevention. So here's the deal. What can you do if you do not build dams to control flooding? Well, first, deepen the rivers. It's like somehow we forgot that this used to be the best tool that we knew about this. And nowadays, it's actually much easier to do because, again, most of the rivers are dried out. So start in the, basically, just after the rainy season, start then. By the time you are in the summer, it will be completely dried, super easy to do. So you can increase the depth rather than height. Do not go Japanese. Do not increase the height because that's a human structure. It can fail. If you uh, basically bury it, basically go as deep as possible. Now you have the benefit that earth is on the backside. It's passively safe structure. You do not want actively safe structure. You always want passively safe. So that can be done. So, and there are other tools also that allows us to handle uh, storms, rivers, rain, all of those things without killing the river, without harming ourselves uh, dearly, so to say. So we have to take those tools rather than dams. We have learned the hard way. It's like, if we keep going on, it's like, we're going to build dam. We're going to keep more dams. And then it's like, damn, our children's will be like, children, not grandchildren. Let that be very clear. Children, 30 years. Children's would be like, uh, daddy, what is this river that you talk about? What is this grand river that you talked about? I've never seen a river. Be it France, they were like, uh, yeah, what happened to your rivers? Uh, yeah, we boiled it off because we were trying to cool nuclear power plant with it. Happened. 2020. Happened. So it's one of those things that you really have to understand. We have to let the dams go. Otherwise, we nature will let us go. So this was my presentation on the consequences of dams. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please hit the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press this like, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.